Here's a little tip for you before you begin spraying. You got your can of lacquer sealer and what you want to do, it's room temperature right now, and what you want to do is safely heat the contents of this can, thereby raising the internal pressure of the can. And that produces a higher velocity mist with smaller droplets. Smaller droplets mean a finer finish, and that's a good thing. So take a sandwich baggie, a Ziploc baggie that you may have, place the can inside the baggie. Get a water pitcher, fill it with approximately about five inches or so of water, and use hot, hot tap water. Don't boil the water, don't put it in a microwave for five minutes, don't get crazy with it. Just get some good, hot, warm water in there. Take your can inside the bag, place it into the warm water, and then let it sit there for about 10 minutes. And by heat transference and thermodynamics, the contents of the can are going to get warmed up thereby increasing the pressure and getting a better spray and a better result for you. Make sure you're wearing gloves as well as a ventilated mask to prevent the fumes from entering your lungs. We've got our can of lacquer based sanding sealer which is really warmed up and nicely done. For this video I am not going to wear a mask. I've got a good ventilation out here but I'd still wear one if I weren't trying to talk to you guys about the procedure. So let's just set this down here now, to begin spraying properly, there are three techniques that you need to master. Okay? The first technique is this. You always start spraying off of the body and finish off of the body. You never start or stop your spray on the surface. That will cause puddles, runs, drips, and unsightly errors that you don't want. Okay? Second tip. Make sure that you always start from the farthest edge away from you and work back towards you as you spray. Third tip, make sure that you always, always, always spray very light coats, slightly wet. You don't want them dull and misty looking and you don't want them thick and wet and goopy looking. Just a light, wet, even coat. The way we cover a body evenly with a can is by going in a checkerboard pattern. We're going to spray lengthwise, light overlapping passes, and then widthwise with light overlapping passes. So let's get started, and I'll show you what I mean by these three techniques. Okay? Now we've got our body, we're going to lay it flat, we're going to paint the rear surface first, and we're going to let that basically remain flat so that gravity helps us, it keeps the paint in place, and we don't have any runs, drips, or errors. If you spray vertically, you might see a lot of runs or problems coming up. So we're going to begin our spray off of the surface, continue along the grain lines in a lengthwise pattern, and then we're going to end up stopping the spray after we finished off of the body. We're going to go light overlapping passes, moving fairly quick, keep the can about 10 to 12 inches from the surface at about a 60 degree angle as you spray. And as you can see, I'm stopping off and starting off. So I'm starting off the body and coming off. I pass over the body and then stop the spray. And I'm continuing along the grain lines. Very light passes. Then the next thing I'm going to do is go widthwise, starting at the farthest edge I can with slight overlapping passes and work my way back. Same distance, about 10 to 12 inches from the surface and at about a 60 degree angle. You want to take your time, make even passes, make sure the same amount of time develops between each pass so that you know you're applying the same amount of coats. You can work your way back up in extra light passes just to even out what you just did if you need to. But don't apply too much. Now what we need is patience because it's going to take about 10 minutes for the sealer to set. It's not going to fully dry but at least it'll be set enough for us to flip the body over and let's spray the top. Then I'm going to show you how to spray paint the sides. They're a little trickier. We've sprayed the top and the back with two checkerboard what we call wet coats. A wet coat is when you apply the second coat before this first coat is totally dried. 
That's the beauty of lacquer, is that it will burn into itself. So the top layer melts into the underlying coat as you spray it, and it ends up being unified in very nice, thicker coat as a result. So we've gotten two checkerboard coats on the back, two on the front. Now what we're going to do is spray the side of the guitar. Think of the side when you're spraying it in terms of four different zones. You want to make sure that this is the treble side, the bottom side, the bass side, and the top side. And what we're going to do is spray each zone separately. Instead of trying to do it all in one pass and flipping it around real crazy, we're going to do it in a logical way. So starting with the treble side, we've got our nicely warmed can of lacquer sealer. We're going to begin to spray off the body, continue it through, stop it off the body. We're going to spray the length of the side, and we're going to do light overlapping thin coats on the body. Off, stop. And that's all we're going to do is spray two or three light passes on that because the sides will end up easier to finish and get flat and smooth than the top and bottom will. Just do the grain orientation. So then what we want to do is spray the bottom the same way. Keep it as flat as possible, about 8 to 10 inches away, and do overlapping strokes just very lightly. If you notice the edges between the two zones were oversprayed on both sides so they ended up getting nicely covered. And then we're going to do the base side, just light coats, evenly applied. And then last but not least the uh, top side or the inside of the treble cuts. To spray these it makes a lot of sense to spray the interior of the inside treble cut from the opposite side. In other words, don't try and spray directly down on it because it's almost a vertical surface. So we want to hold it at a slight angle, do two or three slight passes, flip it around, do the same thing, get the back strap or that little piece of wood there that sits right below the neck route. Make sure that the joint on either side is fully engaged. And that's it. We've got the tips covered. We've got the sides. Nicely done. Two or three wet passes is all you need. And there. Now the hard part. Be patient. Let it hang up. Let it dry for about two hours with the sealer coat before you attempt to apply another sealer coat. And then after that we're going to start with the wet sanding process and getting this level so we can lay some nice beautiful lacquer on top. So let it dry outside because the fumes from this are dangerous. So find a nail in your garage, hang it from that, do something out of the way where you won't be tempted to mess with it and let nature and time take its, take its toll. To paint the neck, think of that in terms of different zones as well. You want to go ahead and tape the face of the fingerboard off right up to the edge of the top of the fingerboard, but leave the side of the fingerboard exposed as a seamless transition for the wood neck. We've already got the neck tenon taped off and our handle securely attached. So what we want to do is spray the egg head face and the tongue face first with the sealer. We're going to use the same process which is lengthwise and crosswise, very light. Same with the peg head. Start off the peg head, end off of it, and then several slight light coats like that. Then we're going to let that dry for about 10 minutes. So we've already sprayed and sealed with one double checkerboard coat the face of the peg head and the neck tenon or the tongue face. So now let's flip it over and basically using the same principles again which are start the stream of paint off of the uh, body and the neck, carry it on through and finish off. Spray lengthwise along the grain lines. It doesn't take a lot to get the wood wet. And we just want to apply even lengthwise coats. And then don't forget the tip of the peg head as well, which we'll do a couple of light taps there. Now we've got the wood sealed on the peg head, tongue, neck, and the rear of the neck with good sealer coat. 
We're going to let this dry for about two hours, and then we're going to apply a second coat. Then once the body and the neck have multiple thick coats of lacquer sealer on them, we're going to start with the wet sanding process. 